Hi, today I'm going to be painting a line and wash painting um, using my Faber Castell Artist Pit Pens. I'll be using two of them in this, um, a 1.5mm nib for the shadows and darker areas and a fine, fine liner, sort of medium size, I think it's a 0.5. Um, as always, if I'm doing a line and wash, I focus to start with on a pencil drawing and getting the pencil drawing um, right so that it looks okay. I'm not worried about too much detail, just making sure that any perspective is right, my proportions are okay, and that I like the shape and the look of my um, pencil drawing um, so that when I come to use the ink and the fine liner, all I need to do is go over my lines and thicken some of them up and darken some of the areas. So the initial drawing is fairly important. Um, the photograph for this will be, and the line work and the sketch will be available to copy and download on Patreon. So if you're interested in that, please follow the link below. So here I've moved on and I'm beginning to map out my line work using the fine liners. The Faber Artists Pit Pens, Faber Castell, are my favourite fine liners at the moment. They're filled with Indian ink, which is lovely and rich, and it's waterproof, and the pens themselves have very reliable nibs, so I really recommend them. Um, and I must just say I'm not sponsored by them, but if they wanted to, then please get in touch. I've done quite a few similar scenes recently in line and wash so if you're interested in this technique please take a look at my list of videos um, and you'll probably find some slightly more in-depth tutorials whereas this one is more of a sort of a summary of um, the process and of course it's a transferable process that's not just relevant for uh, this particular painting it's a sort of method that once you get it under your belt you can apply it to anything that you want. The first job as I say is to pencil in your skyline um, and basically that's the process of simplification. You just you can miss out some of the buildings or some of the more complicated things. You can simplify some of the trees and the bushes but just make sure that you keep your um, where the buildings and the wall, the city wall, meet the water. Keep that nice and flat, nice and horizontal. Um, and then also your roof lines, keep them nice and horizontal. So what I'm doing is I'm alternating between my two fine liners and putting in thinner lines, mostly outlines, with the finer one and using the 1.5 mil. Uh, fine liner to put in the shadows and nice dark trees. The thing about a line and wash is it's a sort of different type of style of watercolour. It's closer to drawing in some ways than painting because most of the work is done um, with this line drawing that you put in with waterproof ink to start with. This creates all of your darkest darks. So you're working from dark um, to light really I suppose. Uh, the light will be any unpainted paper and your palest washes uh, but the rest of your mid-tones will be created with the paint and as you paint it's at that point that it's very important for you to bear in mind the areas that you want to leave light and not paint them or lift them out um, while the paint is still wet. So as you can see, I'm working across this line drawing and it does take quite a while to do this sort of thing, but it's worth it because when you come to paint, it can be quite a quick job if you plan it um, appropriately. I think as I've said in previous um, demonstrations, the line work in a line and wash does all the heavy lifting, all the hard work for you. So it's worth taking your time and making sure that you end up with a kind of a really balanced um, tonal look. You want lots of contrast, 
but also plenty of um, un unpainted or un uninked areas within that um, skyline. Today I'm using my favourite um, Saunders Waterford cold press paper. It's 100% cotton and it's a really lovely paper to use. One of the reasons that I enjoy using it so much is that once you start working into it wet in wet, it stays wet for a very long time so it's open and workable. And because it's made of cotton, um, when the paint and the water um, are, are applied to it, it sort of soaks into the, the paper um, rather than just sitting on the surface and sort of drying unevenly. It dries much more evenly and your diffusions are really beautiful and it's an incredibly highly rated paper. Um, this is a quarter imperial sheet, which is about... 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimeters by 38 centimeters and I've taped it to my board and this time I've slightly changed the proportions by taping an extra bit of tape across the bottom um, just a little way up so I'm making this a, a long sort of narrow composition a little bit like a panorama. Once I've finished my line work then I like to leave it for five or ten minutes just to make sure some of the sort of thicker areas like the trees where there's lots of ink to make sure they're completely dry because as soon as they're dry they're waterproof if the ink is wet then it'll smudge when I apply water now I'm using my medium um, Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush to wet the page almost all over but I'm cutting around the buildings for the most part well the spire on the on the right um, and leaving the buildings dry in in the most part and then coming in and wetting the sea area and the sea wall area. The reason for this is if I leave the building areas dry when I apply the wash um, as it runs down the page because my board is at an angle of 45 degrees as the, the, the wet paint runs down the page it will not go into the areas that are dry so I will retain um, the white of the paper on parts of the building if you see what I mean um, which means that I will be able to then um, go into those and paint those later I don't want to cover the buildings over completely but if I'm quick if I get any paint where I don't want it I can just dab it off with a tissue now this is raw sienna and this is burnt sienna the only other colour I'm going to use later is indigo. But first of all, I'm just going to get these, these beautiful sunset colours across the sky, the water, and on some of the buildings, because the, some of the buildings will pick up the glow from the sky and the reflectivity of the light on the water. So I'm not being too pristine about um, keeping all of my buildings white, as long as I keep some of them white around about the focal point of the two towers, then I should be fine. Now this is my indigo and I've made up a sort of medium mixture, but quite watery, but then I've dabbed my, water, my brush onto a tissue and that's taken most of the water off. And now I'm applying it to my sky and my sea. Now it's really important um, that you dab the water off with a cloth or a tissue there. Um, because if you go into your wet wash with a wetter mixture of paint, you'll end up making nasty marks and cauliflowers. So make sure that, it's, that your brush is reasonably dry by dabbing it onto a tissue first. Now I'm pulling some of that shadow colour across the base of my buildings. And you can see, see I've still left my buildings across the left side mostly, unpainted. I'm going to pull down just the beginnings of some reflection from those two towers. That's the same mixture and using the same brush. 
and a little bit of reflection which will just soften and diffuse nicely from the rest of the buildings. Mop up any runs of paint across the bottom or any excess water as you go. And then also quickly before it dries, adding some of this shadow colour um, across the water towards the front, pulling it down at a slightly sort of narrower angle, not quite horizontal. So tending it down um, from the sort of top of the water line left through to bottom right, and then re-establishing quickly a little bit more shadow. And now this is a clean, damp flat brush clean and damp running through the wet paper and lifting out a few white water lines. These will soften back a little bit, won't look quite so harsh, but this starts to add to the reflective look and the ripples on my water. And now all that needs to dry. And once it's dry, I can focus a little bit on the buildings, but it's nearly finished. There's not much work that needs to be done. It's nice and dry. So now for a bit of that shadow color um, into the sea wall or the harbor wall, whatever it is, I'm not too sure just sort of fairly uneven dabs of shadow here and there across this wall. And that further area on the right, that slightly more distant bit of land is in shadow and so is that building there. So now I'm gonna put the shadow color across um, across the parts of the buildings that are just facing a bit more away from the light. And you can see that's making the sort of um, the unpainted areas stand out really nicely. That, those tonal value shifts of light against dark and dark against light um, are really important with this sort of watercolour where you're trying to keep it loose and simple. Now this is quite a rich mixture of um, burnt sienna for a few of these beautiful sort of terracotta tiled roofs. Not all of them, just the main roofs. As you can see, I'm not working on roofs that are next to each other, that are touching each other, that would maybe run into each other and sort of spoil the clarity. Um, I'm leaving gaps, so once those are dry, I can go in and paint the rest of the roofs. Now back in with the shadow colour, just to pull a bit of shadow down the tower and on the spire or steeple. So this part of the painting really is, um, you know, it's the balancing up and you can use any colour scheme for this kind of painting. You don't just have to be restricted to the colours that I use. You can choose your own, but just pay attention to your tonal values. That's the most important thing. And now to use the, a flat brush just to put in some slightly stronger reflections. You can see that as soon as I do that using the tips of the brush and just little horizontal side to side motions that it's beginning to establish the look of the reflection in the water um, a lot more strongly. Sort of bring along maybe dark and a bit of a darker shadow paint between some of the white lines that I'd lifted out earlier. And I hope you can see as well that um, even areas where I'm using very dark paint, um, the dark ink from the line drawing is really making our dark stand out beautifully. And that really can help if you're just learning this technique to help you to judge which areas you have to leave light and which areas you can use mid-tones for because your darks are there and all you need to do is work with them and balance your painting up with the darks that you've already put in 
So to summarize, um, we have the three main tones we're working with here. The darkest darks, which is the ink work, the lightest lights, which is any areas of unpainted paper, which really stand out as you can see here. And the paint mostly does the job of nearly all the mid-tones. Perhaps a little bit of hatching in the line drawing will give us a mid-tone too. Just darkening up the church and dabbing out, softening with a clean, damp mop brush. And finally, um, a sort of fairly rich mixture, but not too dark, um, of our shadow indigo colour. Um, on the tips of the flat brush and brought through across the line work that we put into our water um, and just building up a few shadows and working with the rest of the painting until it looks more balanced. And I think I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So just leaving it to dry once you've finished doing the water and any finishing touches that you think your painting needs, then just remove the tape and um, carefully peeling it away from the painting um, to make sure that if your tape was to be a bit, a bit too sticky um, and if it was to tear the paper that you, it won't tear into your painting. So pull it away at about 45 degrees from the painting. Now, I hope that you can see how effective this simple technique is, um, that if you take care with your initial pencil drawing and then with your line drawing and get your dark contrast in <clears throat> first, then the paint will take care of the mid-tones and your unpainted paper will negatively paint your lightest lights. Thanks so much for watching. Um, please um, give us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting and season's greetings. Bye for now.